Welcome back. Today we're going to talk about cybersecurity, just very basically um, how cybersecurity works and some main concepts in cybersecurity. Um, I really recommend, uh, I guess after this course or during this course, um, looking up more about cybersecurity and how cybersecurity works. Um, I'm just going to give the basics now to get us started, but it's a whole field by itself and very, very interesting, very related to digital forensic investigation. So uh, cybersecurity. Um, cybersecurity attempts to protect networks, computer programs, and data from attack, damage, or unauthorized access. Um, basically, cybersecurity is trying to protect the information that you need to be protected, that you want to be protected. Um, this is extremely difficult to do, as we talked about in the first lecture. Um, cyber criminals are very active, and there's a lot of cyber crimes going on. And um, cybersecurity also usually involves uh, thinking about security first. And most people and most organizations don't really think about security first. They think about um, you know, profits or quickness or uh, access, all of these things. And cybersecurity makes things more difficult for them and for the attacker. So cybersecurity is normally kind of an afterthought, which is why we have so many cybersecurity issues or cyber crimes happening now. Um, so cybersecurity is very difficult to do. We want full, easy access on demand. So think about if you, if you come home and you get on your computer, you don't really want to type in a password. You don't really want to um, uh, take time to load up a website. You just want everything now. So whatever you want, you want it immediately. Um, the problem is, if you, can access it, it, if you can access it immediately, criminals can probably also access it immediately. So um, if you don't have proper security in place or any type of restrictions, um, then criminals or whoever is trying to use your data uh, will also not be restricted, um, probably not be restricted. Uh, we don't want others to have full, easy access on demand. So we want easy we want other people to not have it easy, but trying to do both of those things is very difficult. A balance must be found between openness and the level of risk that we're willing to take. So on your home computer, you might have pictures of your family. Um, you might have some kind of semi-sensitive documents like a, a picture of your bank account or something like that. Um, but the information to you maybe is not so valuable and to a criminal is also not very valuable. So the risk to you is relatively low. Now, if we think about an organization who has all of their um, intellectual property on a hard drive, um, if they lose that intellectual property or it's somehow leaked out, maybe their business goes uh, bankrupt, right? So their intellectual property or protecting their intellectual property is very high risk because it could make criminals a lot of money and it could result in the, the, the business going out of business. Um, so we need to think about security in a little bit different ways in both of them, but we need to think about security in both of them at least a little bit. Um, and right now, most people aren't thinking about security. So think about your phones, for example. Um, how many people have actually put you know, any type of security programs on your phones or even passwords on your phones more than just a quick um, kind of scrolling lock or something like that? How much do you think about updating your phone software, updating the apps on your phone, keeping them up to date, um, not installing random applications that you don't know where they came from? Um, so most people are not really thinking about security very much um, because they think nothing will happen to them. Um, but we know that uh, cybercrime happens all the time to a lot of people um, in a lot of different ways. So um, cybercrime is actually pretty likely. Uh, whenever we're talking about cybersecurity, we can talk, uh, there's a, a relatively easy cybersecurity model you can think of. It's called the CIA model. Uh, it's a model used to guide information security policies within an organization. So. Um, there's a lot of different models and some are, I think, better than the CIA model, but I'm just saying it now because it's very easy to get your, your head around so you can start to think about security. So first off is confidentiality. The C in CIA is confidentiality. Um, and confidentiality means only those who should have access can access sensitive information. So only those who should have access can access the information. Again, think about your phone. Is there anyone who maybe shouldn't be able to access everything on your phone that could if they wanted to? Or your computer. 
Is there anyone who could definitely access all of the files on your computer, even though you probably don't want them to access everything? Or, you know, cloud storage, emails, uh, chats, anything like that. Most likely, there's somebody who knows how to get into your system or knows how to get information from your system um, that uh, you might not want them to get everything, right? So maybe you're lacking confidentiality, some confidentiality. Now, this is a big problem in organizations because confidentiality means we have to restrict people from accessing different things, but people want access to everything very easily. So again, we have to strike this balance. Um, next is integrity in the CIA model, uh, maintaining the consistency, accuracy, and trustworthiness of data over its life cycle. So how do we know that the data has not been modified? How do we know it hasn't been tampered with or um, yeah, changed in some way? Um, for example, your bank account. How do you know that somebody has not gone in and modified the amount of money that's in your bank account um, illegally or taken some money out? Um, or if you send an email to somebody, how do you know that somebody didn't stop the email in the middle whenever it was being transferred and then change something and then send it? Um, all of these things are possible, um, but we have more or less some ways to check the integrity of the data that we're sending to make sure that data is not modified whenever it's um, not modified whenever it shouldn't be modified. And availability. Um, those who should have access can ha access data whenever they want. So this... Um, uh, I think the most common way or a well-known way that availability is manipulated is through denial of service attacks. So if you think about a government website or just a website, if you want to stop people from accessing the website who should be able to, you do a denial of service attack and then they can't access the information on that website. So it brings the website down. Um, so confidentiality, integrity, availability. Um, if you can, uh, basically, information security is trying to maintain all three of those things. Now, all three of those also require some type of balance. You can't necessarily have all of them at the same time, but you should be thinking about all of them whenever you're trying to think about securing data. Uh, so now, what is data? <laughs> data, um, CIA applies to data and information that's in storage or in transit. So if something is in storage, it's on your hard drive, it's on your computer or your phone, and it's not going anywhere. It's not being sent anywhere. Um, we have to think about protection of data on a storage device a little bit differently than protection of data that we're sending. Um, so for example, if you write a letter and you put it in a desk drawer, somebody could come in, open the desk, and take the letter out and read it. But if you um, send the letter, you put it in an envelope and you send it through the mail, then there's different risks. Somebody could intercept the letter and then open it up and then read it, right? So the idea is that the information in the letter has different risks depending on what you're doing with it. If it's just in the desk drawer, it's probably more secure than if it's being sent unless people can get into your house, okay? Um, yeah, so for example, storage would be like hard drive, tape backup. Um, uh, in transit would be anytime you send data over a network, over the internet, uh, to a cloud storage device, anything like that. Uh, the life cycle of the data describes its use uh, for the time it was created and the time it was deleted. So data has a, a lifetime, basically. Um, data and information, information, so for example, uh, information that we know today um, yesterday, it would have been very valuable, but, but, but today, maybe everyone knows it, so there's no value in that information anymore. Information and data have a lifetime, and usually the, the older the information gets, the less valuable it becomes, depending on what the information is. Uh, so this includes how data is stored, analyzed, and transmitted. Uh, the value of data, data has a value in the form of information it provides. So whoever controls data really controls uh, the information and they control a lot of things if they can uh, control the data. Uh, the value of data is usually limited in time, like I said. Uh, cyber crimes attack each area of the CIA model. So for example, stealing credit card numbers or other personal information uh, for sale could affect the confidentiality of the credit card number. So if we're attacking confidentiality, we might be stealing uh, personal information and then selling it. So then that way it's not confidential anymore. Uh, stealing trade secrets uh, for sale or blackmail, stealing passwords to access resources, uh, or social engineering, which we'll talk about more in another lecture. 
Uh, integrity, changing the contract payment accounts electronically. So if I can uh, access contracts that you have where you say that you'll pay me a million dollars, um, maybe I can access that contract and change the bank account so you send the million dollars to somebody else. So that's uh, attacking the integrity of these accounts. And cyber criminals do this all the time. They intercept the transaction or they intercept uh, the contract, change information, and then send it on. Uh, using a virus to modify data uh, um, of a competitor um, or just trying to manipulate the competitor's data in some way. Availability, like I said, DDoS attacks make comp the competitor lose money or uh, reputation, face, things like that. Uh, crypto locker blocking access to data on hard drives. So um, right now, crypto lockers are fairly common uh, where you get a virus and it encrypts all of your data and then it asks for money to decrypt the data. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about them, but basically don't pay those. Uh, in, if, you're, if your information gets encrypted, don't pay because most of the time they won't unlock your data anyway. Um, uh, so you're unlikely to get your data back even if you do pay. Um, crypto locker blocking access is an attack on availability. So you want to access your files, but you can't. Okay? Um, the best way around that is just keep a backup of all of your data that's important to you. Uh, confidentiality relies on the identification of an object or person that we need to keep confidential. Um, we need to, we can keep it confidential through something called access control lists. So we restrict who's accessing the information. Uh, we can keep it confidential through data encryption. So if we encrypt the data, other people can't access it unless they have the key. Uh, IDs and passwords and biometrics. So um, again, in confidentiality, all of those methods have their own weaknesses, but um, it's what we can do now, at least, to try to keep things a little bit more confidential. Um, think about, have you, have you actively used encryption on your files to keep them confidential? Probably not. They're probably unencrypted, and anyone who gets access to your computer can probably get access to your sensitive data. Integrity uh, usually relies on change detection and backup. So we just try to monitor and see when files or when, um, when data is being changed or modified in some way and how. Um, uh, we use something called checksums, which we'll talk a lot more about later, uh, data backups, things like that, to ensure that if something is modified, we can still recover it. Uh, integrity should be maintained while data is stored, which is not very difficult and while in transit, while we're sending it, which is pretty difficult because once we send it away from our network, we don't really have control of it anymore. So integrity is a very big challenge in transit. Availability, usually maintained through hardware duplicates um, and updated software. So making sure that um, uh, you have some sort of redundancy in place, that way if the information that you're looking for is somehow uh, compromised or the computer breaks or whatever, there's another computer that can take over for it. Um, so big companies have a lot of different servers and if one server hard drive fails, then all of the other servers take over for this, um, for this hard drive. So they have basically full-time availability. Uh, ensure the hardware is in working order, update all system software. Um, Software that's not updated is more vulnerable to um, different viruses or exploits, um, which means that I could potentially take over the computer and take it down or compromise uh, confidentiality, confidentiality or integrity or availability. Uh, configure red redundancy, so again, other computers that can take over if one computer fails or backups in case some data is lost or modified in some way. Um, and consider disaster recovery. Um, Disaster recovery in information security is a big field. So for example, if uh, neighbor, if there was an earthquake and neighbor in, in Chunchan um, kind of fell into the earth and their server is stopped, they probably have some sort of backup recovery in another town, maybe not even in Korea, um, that could take over for all of the services that they're, that they're providing. Uh, consider software-based solutions like um, denial of service prevention and firewalls. We'll talk more about that in a little bit. Uh, cybersecurity attempts to make it difficult for the majority of attackers. So you're not going to be able to prevent all different types of attacks, but you can make it difficult for the majority of attackers. There's lots of people that are trying to compromise systems for a lot of different reasons. Um, 
And our job basically is to not be the easiest target. And right now, it's very easy to take over a lot of different systems because people don't update, um, they use bad security practices or don't think about security at all. So attackers can, can compromise their systems pretty easily. Um, computers on the internet uh, are being attacked all the time, usually by viruses or botnets. Um, so automated programs designed to take over systems or compromise systems in some way, computers are being attacked all the time. Whenever I put a computer online, within the first five to 10 minutes, um, people are already scanning me and trying to attack. And it's just automated systems um, learning about uh, computers that are online. Uh, attackers focus on easy, insecure systems. So if you have not thought about security at all, your system is probably easy and insecure. Okay? Uh, many systems have almost no security configured. Basic security practices can prevent the majority of attacks. So if you just do basic, basic security things like keeping your system up to date, then a lot of security attacks will be stopped immediately. Uh, attackers also focus on high profile systems. Uh, where they can potentially gain a lot of money and potentially a lot of fame. Um, so if somebody can gain money or fame, they're more likely to do those types of attacks than just taking over some random person that's generating no value for them. Uh, basic level cybersecurity. Again, the biggest thing is update all of your software. Keep everything up to date. Um, Windows 7, for example, is now out of service. So Microsoft no longer supports Windows 7. So I've seen people who are still running Windows XP, which hasn't had any security updates for, I think, a couple of years now. So if you're running Windows XP, um, you are completely vulnerable and you're probably, your system's probably already taken over. If you're running Windows 7, now it receives no security updates, so you should be updating uh, basically to Windows 10. You need to be at Windows 10 right now and keep Windows 10 up to date if you're using Windows. Um, but that's the same for OS X, um, Mac or Linux. Any system that you have, keep it up to date. Otherwise, you're more likely to be compromised in some way, especially if you're using it to browse the internet and things like that. Uh, all software on, com on the computer can become a vulnerability if it's not updated regularly. So keep software up to date. Um, not just the operating system, even programs, Microsoft Office, Hangul Word Processor, whatever you're using, update it. Access controls, restricted accounts. So another big problem is that uh, computers let users do basically anything they want on the system. So restrict the accounts so you can't do everything, right? That means that if somebody tries to take over your system, they can't do everything either, like install more viruses or whatever they want to do. Reduce access rights for your accounts and require passwords for the administrator account. Um, to get privileges to be able to install software, that should be restricted. Uh, does the device need direct access to the internet? Most likely, no. Very few, I think in ver only very special cases, do you need to be directly connected to the internet. So instead, you can use some sort of uh, firewall or uh, maybe a wireless router with a firewall configured as a first layer. And then it becomes much more difficult to connect to your computer and take over your computer directly. So very rarely do we need direct connections to the internet. Um, we can use some sort of firewall or um, intermediary, basically. Uh, yeah, and then for, I guess, businesses more than, more than normal users, check your logs very often. So if you're running a server, check your logs and figure out what are people trying to do whenever they connect to you. Is anyone attacking you? What types of attacks are they? Can you prevent them? Um, any strange logins, any strange connections or errors? Um, antivirus. Uh, antivirus is very questionable. Um, uh, you should use antivirus and you should keep it up to date, but at the same time, it's not a cure-all. Like um, new types of viruses, um, have found ways, very good ways around antiviruses. Um, so you should have them, but you shouldn't keep all of your trust in them. Use an antivirus plus good security practices. I would prefer good security pra practices over an antivirus actually. Um, but you still should have it um, if you can. Make sure it's up to date. Um, here I said, you use regional and global antivirus for better pr protection. So for example, there's um, V3 in Korea. It's uh, uh, a Korean antivirus company. And for Korean or Asia, I guess, based attacks, it's pretty good. 
but it will miss a lot of global stuff. So I recommend if you're going to use an antivirus, try to pick a local one and try to pick a global one and run both of them at the same time and keep them up to date. Again, good security practices, restricting access to your system will probably work better than antiviruses and it's cheaper. Uh, don't use secure systems to visit, visit uh, unknown or unrelated websites. So I've seen some, for example, cafes or restaurants where they have a point of sale system running Windows and they will use that to visit a music streaming website. Okay? But their point of sale system is where they do all of the credit card transactions. So if they visit a website that has a virus on it, their computer gets a virus and now whoever owns that virus can get all of the credit cards from that computer. So just think about what do you do with your computer and is there any information on here that um, is high value or high risk? Um, if it is, don't go to unknown websites online with it. Um, yeah. Uh, many current attacks focus on compromise of the browser. Um, the browser is the main way to connect to the internet now, so uh, a lot of viruses use the browser vulnerabilities to try to get into your system. Um, always use the newest updated browser. Um, if anyone is using Internet Explorer anymore, it, it has been irrelevant for a very, very long time and very insecure. At least use Microsoft Edge, which is the new kind of like new Internet Explorer. Do not use Internet Explorer. It's no longer basically even supported. Um, what, uh, what I've seen in terms of security, uh, Google Chrome seems to be one of the most security conscious with probably Firefox second. And then I think Edge is starting to come up and Opera. So um, I would go with probably uh, Google Chrome and um, Firefox, make sure you keep them up to date. Google Chrome updates itself automatically. Um, you don't have to do anything. You just have to start it. Um, so make sure that you have automatic updates. You're using the latest software and especially the latest browser. If you're using Internet Explorer still, um, you're very insecure and it's very likely that you're going to be taken over. Um, so. I know that's a lot of different things to talk about with cybersecurity, but like I said, cybersecurity is a very big field. There's no one way necessarily to do it right. It really depends on the risk you have. So what do you want to protect? Um, yeah, so I, I really recommend looking more into information security, how to protect yourself. Um, that will help you whenever you're doing an investigation to figure out why was this victim compromised? How were they compromised? Um, things like that. So, um, yeah, information security, very big, very interesting area. Um, we just kind of scratched the surface, so please look up some more about it. Thank you very much.